Looking for cheap and reliable College 25 Ultimate Team coins? Head on over to MMO EXP and use code Poodle at checkout for 5% off your order. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another College Football 25 video. And today we're going to be going over the best strategies for red shirting a player and, of course, how to do it if you don't already know how to do it. Before we do get into the video, guys, I want to thank you for all the support as of late. Keep it going. Make sure to sub if you're new. Give this video a big thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions. And if you haven't already, check out Underdog Fantasy. My link will be down below. You get your first deposit match up to 250. And there's daily specials every single day for all new users that do join with my code. So first, I'm going to show you how to redshirt a player before I go and break down all the strategies for how I go about it. If you go to the team tab and you scroll down to red shirts and you click here, you can manage your redshirt players here. So if you go in here, you can see the ones who are grayed out are players that can't be redshirted. If you see here, if I click on Newsmire, it says you cannot redshirt this player as he's already used it. So that's the first thing. You can only redshirt a player one time. You can't do it more than once. So if they've been redshirted prior, like Newsmire was redshirted prior to this game even being out. So these are guys that you have no control over. And then, of course, guys that you redshirt, you also can't do. So for instance, uh, Mason Taylor and Emery Jones here can be redshirted. Of course, you don't want to do that. So if you click A on them, it does do it, but you can instantly just undo it. So don't think like if you do it, you're kind of screwed here. So in my opinion, the best way to do it is go by position. It's really easy to break it down that way, as you see here. So the guys I consider here are obviously these three freshmen right here. And then of course, the fourth one who's already on the redshirt list. So the way I usually do it is first, I take a look at who my starter is, right? Nussmeyer has abilities. He's an 87 overall. The next closest freshman is 10 overalls behind. Now, I know if you were like playing Madden, you'd probably think, oh, well, I want to start the freshman. He'll be an 87 in one year and develop him. It is very hard to play with a 70 overall quarterback, especially in a competitive league. It is not that easy. They don't have the best abilities. They don't have them upgraded or they just don't have the, the accuracy. So for instance, with quarterbacks, I've noticed that if you look over here, the deep accuracy on some of these freshmen are all pretty poor. It's one of those things they develop over time. So you won't be able to hit the deep ball like you could with the starter. So although you think like, oh, they have the, the speed and the throw power, they'll be fine. They, they really won't. So I would definitely consider freshmen, especially guys that are 10 overalls behind is automatic for uh, retro guys, in my opinion. Now, there's one thing to keep in mind here is deal breakers. So if you do sign a five star quarterback or a four star quarterback that has a deal breaker that says playing time or certain things like that, you want to consider that because although you might have a five star freshman quarterback who's like a 79 overall and you might be saying, oh, well, he still falls below almost 10. I should I should redshirt him. That's not exactly the case because if you do redshirt him, he may request a transfer right after that season because you did break his deal breaker or most likely will. So definitely keep that in mind. So the next thing to consider here is really this. And this is what I find so important with this, especially in terms of redshirting. You want to actually click on these players and take a look at them. So for instance, Colin Hurley, once you assemble the few guys you do think should make the red shirt list, this is what's really important. Look at their development trait. So remember, there are three. There's normal, there's impact, there's star, and there's elite. When I say three, I mean, there's three that are actually relevant, right? The normal ones, you can just avoid impact, star, and elite are the ones that are going to really grow your players in their freshman year. So what I want to do is go through and look at the development trait. So he's impact. He's a freshman. I don't think he starts, but as soon as I see anything above normal, I'm, I'm going to redshirt them. I honestly don't think redshirting a normal guy is that impactful. You could do it. It doesn't hurt, but it's not something I'm focusing on. So Colin Hurley, impact dev will for sure make the redshirt list. Take him over to wide receiver. So same thing applies. We have two great 84 overall wide receivers. We have an 83 and 81. You look at the freshman, you see a guy, Jeremy Jackson, 75 freshman, probably doesn't start at first glance, right? But then you click on him and you realize he has elite development trait. In my eyes, I think these guys are game changers. They got to start elite development trait abilities. They got to start. You want to have a great season with them because that elite development trait plus playing goes a long way. So really where I would recommend is that impact to star range, a player that can't be out a starter, but has impact to star. I'm probably leaning more towards red shirting them. Even a star could be iffy. It really depends on how the players built and what your starter looks like. But if they have elite, I'm probably not red shirting them. Even as a freshman, I definitely want them on the field, getting stats, Heisman, Offensive player of the year, defensive player of the year. You want to be building these players. So make sure you're not just redshirting elite guys. That is why it's so important to look through your development traits. Because if you if you redshirt an elite guy, you're probably killing it. And in my in my experience simming these, a redshirt freshman in their second year even playing won't get that same boost as a regular freshman. So you're kind of killing that first year. With an elite de development trait, if you have a great year with them, you could easily go into the 90 overall range in one year and be an absolute CFB beast after your first season. Do not waste their elite first season. So basically the strategy from there kind of remains the same. You want to be going through each position individually and kind of assessing where they were at. So for instance, trade as green is a great example of someone who could have been redshirted year one. I really like to start him because he's super fast. But for instance, Mason Taylor in his first year is about a 90 overall as a junior. Great, great tight end. Trade as green, although being a great recruit, doesn't quite fit the bill of starting over Mason Taylor. And if you click on him, 
He has star development trait and he was a freshman. So he's a guy that I would look at and be 75 overall. I should probably redshirt him, give him a year to rest because he's not going to get the right snaps over Mason Taylor. And quite honestly, Mason Taylor will probably transfer if you did start trade as green over them. When redshirting a freshman, you're basically looking at what they can be. You're trying to pretty much give them an extra year and give them some time to build. This could be especially beneficial for 60 overall freshmen, guys that you like think could be great. They have the intangibles. They have the right stats that you'd like in a great player, but they're not quite ready to see the college game day field. So another thing I would recommend doing is potentially if you create side leagues is what I've been doing, create a side league with your team, especially if you're about to join an online league, create a side league with them, give them a first year sim, test out some freshman strategies with redshirting. That's what I've been doing. So to wrap it all up, make sure you go through and see the state of your class. If you have a lot of seniors out of position and you only have one freshman, make sure to redshirt them. If you have a lot of freshmen, redshirt a few. You may have to actually keep some in the depth charts. So make sure not to redshirt all your freshmen because they're just going to end up losing it when you start them. Make a notepad on the side. Go through your list, see what you have remaining on the roster versus red shirts before you just go ahead and red shirting. That's something that's really important in CFB. Always have a notepad on the side. When you're recruiting, you might start to lose track of, I never recruited a cornerback. I never recruited a safety. I need those next year. So just always be mindful of what you're doing. Go through each player individually, see what you want to red shirt, build for the future. And that's the other thing with this red shirting thing. It, it, it's, a, it's a play for the next year and the year after that. It's not a play for the current year. So I know it's it's not sexy. It's, un, it's unexciting, but it's something you have to be doing. And it's especially helpful when you have like a 60 overall that you're red shirting. You give him that redshirt year. He has a good, he has like star dev. He builds up into the 70s. Then maybe in his second year, you give him some reps. Then in his sophomore year, which is a redshirt sophomore year, he's essentially in the 80 overalls, but he had an extra two years of eligibility, which helps a lot with guys who aren't projected to go pro, at least at that overall. One last little piece of advice in this is definitely make sure you're checking out the prospect list for the upcoming year when redshirting players. I think your roster management is very, very important, even in terms of redshirting. I know it seems very minuscule, but if you do redshirt, a bunch of guys you don't plan to use till next year, but then you're bringing in a rookie class of players that might compete with them. It may, may be kind of problematic, especially for time for deal breakers, which basically would just make it so they're not going to be, they're not going to work well together. And one of them's gonna have to go anyways. You're gonna have to force a transfer. So I would definitely not put too much thought and emphasis into players. If you expect to bring in a big class, if you expect to bring in like a big wide receiver class, and you already have a bunch of freshman wide receivers now, and maybe don't focus so hard on redshirting them. Maybe you can just use them or throw them into the rotation or not care too much about them because you don't plan on using them. So my, my point really is look at the upcoming class you plan to, plan to bring in. And especially as the season goes on, you will kind of get an idea and be like, okay, that's not going to work. So I definitely would just think that it's important to do that as well as seeing what your current roster management kind of looks like. If you have a very small piece on your roster of cornerbacks, say you only have five cornerbacks in the roster, you really probably shouldn't be fresh redshirting like two freshmen. It's not really going to work out. And with that being said, you probably should also then make sure going forward, you keep your classes big enough to give you red shirt eligibility and flexibility because if you don't bring in a big enough cornerback class you kind of have to start them all so keep that in mind as well but that wraps up today's video if you did enjoy it give it a big thumbs up make sure to subscribe if you're new if you have any questions regarding red shirting i know it could be a little complicated comment down below or follow me down below on twitter where you can dm me directly and i will help you out a little bit more in depth with your specific situations thanks so much for watching i'm out peace